talk a lot. Um, so I, I guess now I, I, I have a head start because I've talked to these guys before about, about what they've been up to, and I think it's really interesting. We want to share it with you. Um, so maybe, uh, Phil, do you want to start just talking about you know, the, 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 sure. the, your, your kind of where you're coming from in terms of, uh, you know, Curzon Cinemas and your vision, and then obviously uh, Bill can talk about how he helped you kind of put that into place. Sure, certainly. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, we're not a traditional OTT service, and for those of you who know who we are, we are actually a cinema company. And traditionally, our bricks and mortar business has driven our business, but we've now created ourselves a virtual venue, which is a VOD platform, to monetize not only our value chain, which is kind of unique right now. We own the value chain in the theatrical space. We have a, a financing business that acquires films, and, and then we put it onto our distribution business that, and distributes films. And we then have our cinema consumer touchpoint business, which actually releases films into cinemas across the country. But we have this virtual venue, which thanks to Bill's company manages the platform, we piggyback into uh, multi-channel, pay TV, and direct the consumers through web and, uh, well, TV everywhere devices. And so uh, I guess that's, that's the point at which you, you work with Bill in terms of scoping out what a, uh, a kind of on-demand cinema service or multi-screen cinema service should look like. Yeah. What, what were your sort of criteria for that? Uh, going back about a year ago, we, we sort of went, we came to these guys and said, we've got this solution where we wanted to take it from our old existing beta format into something a bit more mainstream, certainly scalable was the first priority. And the second one was to replicate what we do at our physical high street locations, and that is curated cinema in a quality environment. And again, we, we, our cinemas are positioned slightly different to the mainstream cinemas that are out there, and that is that you have an enjoyable experience in a quality environment, a design-led environment, but everything we do is curated and is curated from the choice of films to the venue of design. Each site is designed by a different designer to then the point of the programming. And we change our programming twice a week, and it causes Bill's team multiple headaches, of course. But at the same time, it's, we're almost in this middle ground of pure on demand, what, and consumers just pick and choose, to a TV channel. And we're sort of in between the two. And we don't have any algorithms that create this suggested content. It's all done by my programming team. OK. and so. Bill, do you want to sort of just talk through what, how you came into the equation and what you've, what you've, how you've been working with, with, uh, with Curzon on this? Yeah, so we, um, we, we started talking to Phil back, uh, I guess it was October 2013, something like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Phil came to us with his ideas for what he wanted to do with the Curzon Home Cinema Service. Uh, and we felt, of, of course we would say this, wouldn't we? But we felt we had a good match for what he wanted to do because we, we focus on... Uh, on a very, a very rich televisual experience in, in the applications and the, and the services that we deliver. Uh, and, uh, and we felt that was a, a good match to, uh, to, to what Phil was asking for. Uh, and we were also able to, to target the, the specific devices that he wanted to go to. Uh, in particular, the you know, FreeSat was a, was a key requirement uh, at that point. Uh, and so being able to, to target web, smartphone and, and tablet devices is, is obviously a, is a given, uh, but also having the, uh, the ability to target the big screen, the smart TVs, uh, was, was very important as well. Uh, and so uh, we, we spent, uh, we started, we actually started work in, in January of 2014. We launched in May, uh, so almost a year ago now. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it's been quite, a, quite an interesting ride ever since. Yeah, what, what, do you want to tell us a little bit about what's, what's, what you've, what, what you've learned since the service has been live, what, what kind of feedback you've had from users and, you know, lessons learned, things like that? Lessons learned? I think we've had quite a few. Yeah. But, um, I think it's, it's almost an expectation thing. We, we are a relatively small guy in the, in the whole market space, and, but we are able to deliver a, a slightly above our grade experience. And that's why certainly with the device manufacturers and the platforms we're with, we are featured in every case. We don't partner with anyone who we're not featured with because the reciprocal is we get to promote their services in our bricks and mortar. And that doesn't exist right now, the physical and virtual coexistence. Netflixes of the world, virgins of the world, and, and then previous speakers, you know, they are purely virtual brands in a way, and you know, the set-top boxes excluded. 
So we're slightly different. So we utilize that to, a bit to drive value for them as well as, as, well as us. Um, we've certainly seen how passionate our audience is for, for content. Our, our audience, whether they, they're a Mayfair customer to Kers and Chelsea, to a regional cinema out in Canterbury, Sheffield, they're very, very happy to let us know when we're not doing something quite right or what they believe we should be doing um, or what platforms we should be on and it's their given right that we are there. Um, that's, believe it or not, when you deal with an educated audience, that's almost the kind of the good bad. Um, certainly as we've learned, we've learned that actually simple is best and if you overcomplicate things, I think that's, we, we have some kind of amazing ideas what to do, but we've had to scale them back quite often because it's probably too advanced to where the digital education is right now. I think that's to be quite fair. Um, but I think it's also the, the real bread and butter of where consumers are using, what devices they're using, and everyone's talking about big data here, which is, is an interesting thing. We, we have a lot of data and we cross-fertilize a lot from our cinema group. And that is the next sort of battleground for our own internal argument is, OK, we have a million people that come to our cinemas. They are aware of it, of the service at home, but they're also not. But we don't want to cannibalize either. We actually want both to grow. So that's the kind of difficult bit. And, uh, and I guess from Bill and I, we, 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 both companies have been new in the relationship. But we've learned certainly the, the theoretical limitations of what we can and can't do in relation to our affiliate partners, because of, there are rules to those games. But also, and in our own web world, we'd like to do everything at some point, but it's just not possible. I mean, I think, I think where, um, where what you guys have been doing is really interesting is in terms of uh, building a, a kind of engagement with a, a, an audience you know, across multiple screens, whether that's a cinema or, or, or a screen in, in the home as well. Um, I mean, if so you, you're, not, you're focused on a, a, a premium paid content model um, rather than an advertising model, but I mm -hmm. think that the, the lessons that you've learned in terms of taking an audience from, from one large screen and, and taking it into the home and extending your proposition yeah. through using, using VOD um, and creating a, an upscale service and, as you say, integrating data that you have from within the business. Mm -hmm. I think there are lessons there that that, uh, that that you know that are useful and relevant to this uh, to this this session. Uh, yeah, and, and we we're creating our own ecosystem, yeah. and we don't want people to stop coming to a Curzon Cinema just because they've left one of our venues. We actually are saying, don't stop engaging with the brand. Come back and engage at home, and that's more prevalent certainly in the regions, in market towns, and we're taking cinema to the regions. We're making a lot of the content, whether it's independent film, whether it's arts and culture, which is becoming more and more prominent. Live events is sort of another big thing because we do a lot of live events uh, at cinemas now. And it's taking the exhibition world to people's homes. And, and if you try and get opera or ballet tickets in London, good chance, you just won't. Yet why should that stop the regional customers getting access to that? So we're, we're very different to the mainstream services. And technically, of course, we're, we're different, but certainly from an offering. And we don't it, it want to compete with them in that sense. Uh, and we don't want to compete with our bricks and mortar play either. So we just want a wall garden approach. It's free to sign up. But once we start engaging with people at various price points, we then start to be able to farm the community a bit better. And is there anything that you've, you've been able to bring to the, the product, Bill, that sort of in, in response to, to what Kersner are looking for, what Phil's looking for, that, that, you, that you think is particularly interesting? I think that the quality of the user experience is, is really important to, to have something, particularly when, when people are you know, they're buying a, a day and date movie. Uh, they may be paying £10 for that for a 48-hour rental. And so the, the quality of that experience is, is really important. It's, it's not the same as, as watching you know, an episode of, of some free TV on, on iPlayer or something. It, it, it has to be a high-quality uh, experience. Uh, and if I can partly answer this question by, uh, by playing a video clip, uh, we have an example of the, uh, of the application uh, running on the Amazon Fire TV platform. Uh, and if we, if we roll the clip, then I, you know, I'll, I'll talk over this and give you a, a, a feel for the, the type of user experience that, that we deliver. So if we could play the video, please. So we start this journey in the, uh, in the Amazon App Store, where we've got the app on the, on the box. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, Powerful set-top box. It's a very, very good example of a, of a, of a smart TV type device. Uh, we felt that it was really important to to offer a televisual experience, uh, 
as, as part of this offering to, to the end consumer. So we start the experience with a showreel, and the showreel is, is created by Phil's team every month, and it gives a flavor of the sort of content that is going to be uh, on, on the service that month. So particularly the new, new uh, releases that are coming out, the day and date releases, uh, we're promoting, uh, promoting those in this, uh, this showreel. So this will give you a flavor of the sort of, uh, of, sort of content that is, uh, is available. That actually gets played in front of every film in every screen that we do. So it's around 1,100 screenings a week that this trailer will get shown in front of every. So we really are cross-promoting our, our audience there. And a lot of these films that you're seeing here have actually been proof to all of those voices that say that day and date's going to kill the cinema industry. Both the results, and I can't share it here, but I can assure you both the results have gone up and up and up in each case in parallel with no loss in, in either side. So of course the, the customer can skip that uh, introduction video at, if they want to, um, but it's changed every month, so we, you know, we find that a lot of people are, are watching that through. Uh, so when that's finished, we go then into a series of, of trailers. So this is the, the proposition that is changing uh, you know, two or maybe three times a week. And uh, this is what Kurt, Phil's team are doing at Curzon. They are creating what we call the featured playlist. So we play a sequence of trailers, uh, and we use those trailers to promote the content. So the, the customer can, uh, can watch the trailer, they can see which, uh, which particular content they like from that. Uh, they, can, they can use the menu to navigate as, as well, uh, but they can get a, a flavor of the film. So just, just as you would in the cinema or at the beginning of a DVD, you get to, um, to look, at the, um, look, look at the trailer. So whether the, the customer has skipped onto the next trailer or whether they've, whether they've just let it play through, uh, they get the experience that is suggested to them by, uh, by the platform. And we, we find that people are, are, are skipping some films and, and, and watching through others, uh, and sometimes they're, they, they're, they're only using that method to find what they want. Other times they are navigating through the menu system. Uh, so at any point when you're watching the trailers, you can uh, flick up. The content carries on in the background. We feel that's an important aspect of a, of, of a television service. Uh, rather than just having a flat menu like an, like an application, this is more like a TV channel. So we can navigate through the featured playlist. We can find uh, content that's, uh, that's there. We can find more information out about that content. We've got very rich metadata, which is created by Phil's team. And if we don't like that, then we can navigate further through the system. Uh, one of the things that, that, as Phil mentioned, the, the editorial curation of this service is, is a really important differentiator for, for Curzon. So having the, um, a, the ability to, to put collections into the menu system, this is entirely dynamic. Uh, Phil's team are, are scheduling these collections. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go and find uh, a collection called Road Movies, and we'll, we'll s select some, some content from that. So even without buying anything, we're, we're getting some kind of experience here. And we're, you know, we're, we, we feel that you know, these trailers have been made for a very specific purpose to, to promote the, the film, uh, and it, they do a very good job of that. So we use those trailers to, to do that. As a result of the, uh, the metadata that, that we have, we've got you know, genres, actors, directors, and so on. In this case, we're going to go and look for a specific actor, Nicolas Cage. And we've got a, a couple of films that he's been in here. Uh, Joe was a, was a big film for Curzon, uh, middle of last year. And now we're going to decide that we want to, to actually watch this one. 
So we call up the uh, menu, gives us the, uh, the price to go ahead and, and buy this. So we can, we can rent the film. And in this, in this case, it's integrated with the Amazon in-app purchase. So uh, when you buy the Amazon Fire TV box, it automatically links to your account. So it's a very, very simple process for the consumer. Uh, we've, we've just bought that with a couple of clicks of the remote control. And we can then uh, go straight into uh, to watching that. So if you've got a couple of hours with us now, we'll, we'll enjoy that. Um, or maybe not. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for, for Phil and Bill here in terms of uh, how they put this together or the, the, the rationale behind it? One of the interesting points that you might have seen all of the metadata, we, we're a company that's known for its programming and its knowledge of film and been around since the 1930s and Mayfair has sort of given us sort of credentials from that. Making that known is, is one of our marketing stories that we have to, to get better at, and we are doing certainly outside the London and the metropolitan uh, regions. Um, so we're working hard on that, but one thing that does allow us to do, we are trusted, hugely trusted. So all of that metadata that Bill was referring to is all handwritten by my team. There's nothing generic about this app, one from its UI and experience, but you will never see Joe in this case, in the, although it might be on Sky or it might be on uh, Virgin, in the same way as it would be in now. So you can put them on like by like, but they'll be totally different. We go in and hand pick an image from within the film to be the, the kind of the poster, as you saw there, the image. You also will see that, that my team effectively hand write all of the metadata. Um, again, it's that point of difference in curation. I don't want to compete with the mass broad wide serving audience. I want to stay quite here. I think the demise of some of the bigger platforms recently has been that they've been trying to keep up with the Joneses and it's an expensive hobby. Um, we're not in that game. We're very much in the space that we're in. We have a trusted, loyal following and we continue to serve that. And I think that comes about with, with what Easel have achieved with, with the application. And there's a bigger point there. I think you, as just to extend what you're saying there, I think that, you know, there's a, we talk about, uh, pro, we talk about scale and mass audiences and, and, you know, crunching terabytes of data and so yeah. on. Um, but, but from a consumer's perspective, if I want to watch a piece of content, um, you know, you, this, is, this is another option, which is to go with a company that I trust, that knows what it's doing, yeah. that uses editorial curation, that has a, a finite and curated um, you know, portfolio of content. Uh, it's not all about um, big data and recommendation engines. Uh, there, is a, there is an opportunity to, to succeed in this market across multiple screens by doing something distinct and differentiated. Yeah, certainly, and, and you know, TV's been doing that for years. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. you almost trust a certain channel brand to get, deliver you on good series, films, or, or whatever it may be, and actually, we're just bringing that from the movie world. You know, we, we attend most of the major film festivals, a choir there, our team is also writing books, and we work closely with Faber and Faber, and so from us, from a an environment and a whole community, we are trusted and we're a trusted voice. It's just now getting that audience access to our content, hence the OTT partnerships that we have. But also we have a direct, which is not shown here, but we, we have a beautiful website that is actually a direct to consumer relationship. And we take a lot of pride in, in making that presentable to, to whole new audiences. And you'll see a lot more of that coming out in the next six months because we have a lot more news coming out of our story mill. So that's good. Well, thank you. Well, I, I, I think at that point, we probably need to wind up to give uh, everybody a break. Um, I think that's been a really interesting example. Uh, again, I mentioned this earlier, uh, of seeing innovation from beyond the traditional space. We, we, we had um, someone from the Telegraph Media Group, Denise, earlier, uh, and she was talking about the, the, the success they're having with live streaming video. Again, they find that that's more easy for them to accomplish as a traditional news publisher. Um, and then you have people from the movie world who are creating really interesting multi-screen on-demand products. This is the TV landscape that our consumers are faced with. So uh, innovation is coming in many guises from, from many areas, and I hope we've given you a, a glimpse of another example of that. So many thanks. Please join me in thanking Phil thanks. and Bill. Thank you. Thank you.